makes you feel like you're either in Mega Man or you're going to be a Power Ranger. Welcome back to the Team Nerd Herd Podcast, where our best advice is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. We are here for top picks of the week. It is a big week. I know my brothers have some great picks, some great covers, and we got a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and get this roll call going, and then we'll go ahead and jump into it, my brothers and sisters. Alonzo, what's going on, my brother? How's your uh, week been? We're on Friday, man, so... Man, it it's it's been great. It's been great. Lots and lots of meetings, though, but but doing well. I can't complain, right? Uh, but uh, this is Alonzo, aka Comics and Pops. I am your comic book nerd and your pop culture fanatic, and I am looking forward to tonight's show. What about you, Anthony? Doing great. It's been a couple of weeks since we've had this show. I've been waiting for us to get back into it. You know, new intro, new channel. You know, so the pump for this. You know, um, what about you, Rob? Hey, so we haven't done this show in a while, so I'm definitely excited for today. Yeah, uh, to talk about new books coming out this week, and uh, it's a beautiful Monday. Okay, it's Friday, but you'll see this on Monday. <laughs> oh, we're we're actually going to be doing it. On Sunday. Oh, on wow. Sunday. Hey, Somebody's in at DeLorean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the magic, right now. Yeah, Sunday. It was a beautiful Sunday here. It's a great weekend. You know, so. Oh, man. Yeah. I wish I could edit this, but I can't. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Your turn. <laughs> Yo, what up, Heard? This is Jeff at Geek Driven. Um, it is great to be here on a Sunday. <laughs> no, um, I'm just glad that we're doing top picks again. I'm glad Steve is back with us. And um, I can't wait to talk about what's going on with us and, and well, every, you know, some things in the news and just talk about comics. So what's up, Steve? Nothing, my brother, nothing. I'm ready. It's, you know, it's Sunday, you know, since uh, your boy <laughs> dropped the fumbalaya, fumbalaya, he dropped the ball. But it's your boy, Steve, a.k.a. Hip Hop Sydney underscore comics underscore collectibles. And I'm happy to be back, guys. I love top picks. I miss it. You know, I, I'm over here sitting on Wednesday just waiting for the covers to come out, man, and just bam, 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 pick them. But let's go ahead and go ahead and give shout outs, right? Got to give shout outs before we even start this journey. All right, let's go ahead and give shout outs to the Four Horsemen faction. They're jumping in action. My brother, number one, brother Rudy, the Lucha leader, pillar, supporter to everybody. You'll see him in the chats. Much, much love to my brother, Luke. All right. And then something Wong, brother number two, something Wong. You already know something white is going to happen when he's around, man. He's the executive producer, the Havoc, and the Geek Driven Lives. You know, street. bam, doing many, many things, man. Shout outs to Wong, my brother. Gold age guru, I like to call him, you know, or uh, a shaman, maybe, you know. But, you know, you got to go with brother number three. Brother number three is D-Anime, etc. D-Anime, etc. Terra, Senpai, legendary song. Anime, connoisseur i call him and then brother number four all the way on the other side of the pond man he is glenn Obi, one with the force and the flatulence he might jump out a corner and scare the shit out of you you never know but this is being recorded right <laughs> dude i, I love this i honestly you know? thought that that was a joke you know that he was actually an australian until you no he's in england my brother him. yeah man <laughs> yeah dude, he, is up <laughs> he is he is he is die hard my brother glenn man and he comes in 4k crystal clear and then the music, man. Shout outs to the music. Shout outs to my brother Eddie. Shout outs to Beats by Munster. Munster with the Munster Munster Mash and always making dope beats for the Team Nerd Her podcast. So much love to my brother. Always. Bam. And then, oh my God, man. Are you who's ready for some top picks? I know I'm ready for some top picks. Are you ready for some top picks? Is the herd ready for these top picks? Let's go ahead and get into it. Boom. And and here we go. All right. For top picks for new comic book day, March 9th, 2022. Here we go. Steve, what do you got? Oh, man. All right. So we got the Miranda brothers. We got We Live Age of Paladins, man. Aftershock's release. If you guys did not jump on this indie title, I think you got to admit it. You missed the boat. It, you pick it up in trade. It is a great read. I think the herd has read it as well. We've, we all love indie titles. We all love that what Aftershock is doing, but the way it left and the way it's going to be coming in, I'm super excited. This is highly anticipated. There are a whole buttload of freaking covers, you guys. Tons of covers. Be very selective. There it is, a black and a white. Um, you know, they, they're tying stories, so you got connected covers. I mean, it's just amazing, man. And you also got some 
uh, ratio. So you got that one in 15, definitely pick those up. They're very scarce. They, you know, like you'll lose them, you know, like you just won't get them if you don't jump on them on Wednesday or even pre-order or FOC. So definitely recommend that. The story is epic and I can't wait. Right so along. you get these these two covers and are, are these the incentives? Oh yeah, man. That incentive right now to your very right, man, that is catching fire. It is catching That's fire. cool. So yeah, dude, I thought so too, man. And you just got to pick it up. You look at the, the way it comes in, man. I'm digging it. Dude. And then I like the, the connecting cover is on the very left, man. So that cover's sick too. I, I want to go all covers I picked up. Check mark. Sign me up, coach. It looks like the what's what's that anime? Evangelion Neo Genesis. Yeah, Neo Genesis yeah. Evangelion. Evangelion. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah oh. Brother Wong knows what's up on that. Man. I, I I thought it looked like the Rat Catcher in Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, it does as well. Yeah, yeah. It does. I can't unsee that. <laughs> yes. I've done my job. Was oh it my God. God. Also, <laughs> he was also the cook, right, at the Jawa's Palace? Was he the cook Dang. now? Yeah, I think oh. he was the cook as well. Same we'll robot. have him whip us up a meal. <laughs> Your boy's <laughs> starving. I'm kind of right. hungry. He's awesome, dude. All right. <laughs> no, man, but this is a good pick, Steve. I'm looking forward to this series because of the way it ended. You find out that the brother and, like, all these other kids are, like, superheroes. Oh, yeah, so, man. The, the the ending Spoiler was alert. epic. It, you you guys got to read it, guys. I, I highly and strongly suggest. My man, C-list C Emon Primo, he knows what's up, man. He's been on this title from the get-go. We've had talks about it. You know, I know Alonzo jumped on it, too. He was like, you want to get this right away. So, Aftershock for life. So, Steve, let me ask you something. What's so, because I'm not, I'm not familiar with We Live at all, Okay. So there are actually two series running here, one that's white and one that's black, or that's just the covers. You know, I think it's I think it might be two different series. Uh but then again, when I'm looking at it, the the solicitation, it's all one story. So but for my LCS, I, I got two check marks, black and white. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, pick I'll pick them up, you know. Yeah, you, you know, take my money. I hear you, and you know what? If, if it's both, if it's two series, you know what? But I, I, I'm I'm willing to write them both. So, all right, man, ride or die, right. brother. Yep, yep. And then you also have a pick of the week, sir, right? Oh man, yeah, Venom. The incentive, the one in twenty five. Shots to Martin Simmons. I mean, you see a lot of his work in Department of Truth and a lot of indie titles. He's awesome, man. I think I love his art artwork. It's very dark, but this Venom cover is legit, man. I mean, it's just ominous. Would you want to see Venom like that? I mean, it, heroically, right? Or just out there in comics. But imagine if that was, if he was staring at you just like that. You know, it's, you're gone. You're out. Very, uh, what is that? Uh, Japanese, Korean monster looking? Mm. Oh, yeah. Like grudge like, right? Uh, like the, yeah, those horror films over there. That's what it reminds me of. Dude, hey, you nailed I, it, brother. I love this cover. Like, like mm. to no end. Uh, I I even like like you know how uh, you have your your taste buds in on the, your tongue. You can see it in in this in this oh. picture, man. It, there's yeah. so much detail in it. I love it. Yeah, he has a taste for humans, man. He's about to pound <laughs> them down. Yo, that coverage is legit. Yeah. What's personally. up, Anthony? I'm sorry, man. That's all right. I was gonna say personally, I think Martin Simmons. Um, since you know we're all familiar with him with. Uh, Department of Truth, mm -hmm. you know, and his artwork at the beginning was, you know, everyone wasn't, you know, wasn't feeling it, you know, until he was removed from the book. Then everyone appreciated his artwork, but yeah. the covers that he's done have been on fire. You know, he has a different style, all his own. Yeah, this cover is no exception. Oh, did, yeah. he, did he do the baby one? No, I don't think the the, the the Queen on cover. The yeah, Queen on yeah, Queen on car cover. Yeah, I mean it's rare that a cover creeps me out. This is one of them. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if that's the case, you got to pick it up. I mean, if you're a horror <laughs> fan, you know you got to you got to rock and roll with this man. Yeah, it's horror, total horror vibes for sure. Yes. Yep, pick it up, and then you can send it off to CGC to go get it signed and. <laughs> get it back in 10 months yeah yep. right no well it's supposed to be a six-week turnaround right because he's 
it's a private signing. So that's what they say. Yeah, that's what they say. So that, that would be the one. I mean, if you wanted to get it, I, I mean, I would do it. All right, Steve. Thank you, All sir. Right, Steve, thanks for your picks. And up next, we have uh, Jeff. Jeff, uh, let us know what's going on. Okay, so I picked the X Lives of Wolverine number four. And uh, so far, this story has been pretty crazy. There's the X Lives and the X Deaths are kind of a coinciding connected storyline where it's showing him going to the his spoiler. He's going into the past, uh, a la kind of Days of Future Past, um, you know, inhabiting himself. And um, he's basically got to protect Professor X. Um, and there's on the X death side, I think it's it's showing the Omega Wolverine. And he's going through, um, he's trying, he's telling, he's meeting his kids and all this other stuff. So, but in the X lives, I, I mean, you can tell that he's, He's got these omega uh, red kind of like um, tentacles. yeah tentacles coming out of him, and basically he's he's chasing down an omega red who's basically doing kind of the same thing. He's inhabiting other people, and he's trying to kill Professor X because he has a deal with um, a certain mutant in Russia, and so. <laughs> um, and and this is like really cool mashup of Wolverine and Omega Red, and the second cover over there is actually Kevin Eastman cover. Yeah. So I thought that was really dope. Um, unfortunately, uh, Stan Sakai did one, and uh, oh wow, yeah, what's we'll up, dude? dude I, 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 did, oh, I I dig, I dig it. I was yeah. I was so disappointed though. Like I, oh. I was like, it's something, but it's. It's too much. He, he went a little over the edge. That's, dude, that's right up my <laughs> alley, bro. You know what? We'll, we'll be talking about that in well, cover yes, lovers yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, sure. We'll leave that alone. But I love these two covers. So you got um, uh, Adi Gravith, Granif, and uh, I love this kind of uh, depiction of him with a Weapon X. Oh, yeah. And then this is a Adam Hughes cover, which is a 1 in 50, I believe. And I really like the way the um, the shadowing kind of shows like he has claws, and it's the shadows from like the uh, um, all the foliage. Yeah. So, oh my god, I didn't even notice dope. that. Yeah. What? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Like, well, that's the part about it is like that, it's that's packed. the best cam- kind of camouflage because you don't know where he's coming from. And <laughs> oh, he's chopping so you up. Can yeah. you uh, go back to the other cover? The, the yeah. last page. So that's a Kevin Eastman on the right, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. yeah. And you got like I think Venom's on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was gonna ask, why is yeah. Venom in there? I don't find know. out. I know. I guess we'll find out. Maybe he's yeah. the issue. Yeah, Maybe. Kevin Eastman doesn't do too many Marvel covers. So no, that's... he doesn't, and that's no. why I was like, you. It's gonna be a hot cover to get for sure. I you... guarantee it. And I, look, I don't like the Sakai, but I guarantee that shit's gonna go off the shelf anyway. It's one of the worst covers ever. Yeah, Yo, I, I, don't, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Has Eastman signed some kind of contract with Marvel? Because he's this is what like the third or fourth cover that he's done. I don't. I doubt he, it. I bet you it's a cover for cover pay. Okay. You just recently saw him, uh, a release through Electro White uh, Black and Blood. Yes, um, that he did, and I I wanted to get it, and I just missed out. And I know he did one last year for another Marvel Deadpool. Yes, he did. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. The black and white, the red, black and white, right? Yes, yes, sir. Or black, white, and blood, or something like that. Right. Oh, yeah, that's a, okay. One of those. Yeah. There's so many of them. <laughs> I, I mean, can we just highlight the Adam Hughes man? I mean, Robert would love this over at the low Dude, grade, but you know what? It it's says be hard to get to. It is. It says 007, but the right. most yes. interesting man in the world, bro. Like he's setting the vibe in that little white coat. You know what I mean? Is that an incentive? Yeah, it's a one in fifty. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. No, you ain't getting that. That's why I said it's, it's going to be a kind of a ghost. Oh yeah. yeah, I agree with you with that one, Steve, about that vibe. But I'm feeling that Addy Granov cover. I mean, yep. that that is that's realistic, awesome. Mm-hmm. I can't I tell if that's computer generated or if it's completely painted. I mean, yeah, that's, that's how, the one that's, 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 that's a that's a sleeper cover, right? I think I think that's gonna be a wanted cover, so 
And I, I did ground off. He he didn't he do more masterpiece cards? I I thought so. So I thought this was a Marvel masterpiece card, but I don't think it's exactly the same, is it? Because they didn't label it as a trading card variant. Well, he did Jusco. Because because there's yeah, a Mark Jusco Bagley did the cards. Yeah, Jusco. But I think they use different artists for different years of the ma masterpiece right. cards. I and think he not... did do a couple, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, I wonder if it is. Hmm. Yeah, I will have to double check. No, nah, see, yeah, we're I, gonna research that in the back in the cut. I, I I dig these incentives. Like these incentives are actually like true incentives. You well, no, no, I mean? no. The Audi is actually a open order. No way. Yeah, oh, that's the see. That's, oh, I, I love picking great covers that are open order because it's everyone can get it. Wow. So yeah, man. Yeah, I'm picking well, this one up. Yeah. That is that is a buy for me. Hands down. And then, uh, Jeff, you also have a cover of the week for us, too, don't you? Yes. So this, oh, shoot, I forgot what book this was for. Is it the Thor? No, it's, isn't there a Valkyrie book? There might be. I mean, I'll go check. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, anyways, I, I picked this one by Karen Dar Darbo. So this is um like this awesome, angelic kind of uh, picture of Runa, who is, you know, Runa the Valkyrie, and if you guys know, uh, if you guys listen to, like, Ultra Maximus's, you know, spec matrixes, and and you, you listen to, you know, a lot of the other spec guys, they all know that this is the, you know, relative uh, person who is Valkyrie in the MCU. So, this is, like, her equivalent in the, in the Marvel comic books. Thor. And, yeah, it's Thor. So, I think it's Thor 22? 23. Uh, uh -huh. And again, you know, with the, you know, God of Hammer storyline, I think this is the fifth part and the last part. So, like, this is probably going to be a good spec book because she's on the cover. She's a brand new character. There's not many covers of her. And this is a great looking one. And it's an open order. So, uh, but I guarantee this is probably fly off the shelf once everyone sees it. Because I it looks beautiful already. I can't wait to see it in person. Now, now do you get that in a good grade, though? That, that's that's going to be that's super hard, hard. hard. Look at that book. That black border is going to kill you guys. It's oh. Marvel paper, bro. Good luck. Yep. Yeah, man. It's wavy. It's like waving from the stands at you. Don't forget, it's Penguin. Is it? Is it? Diamond shipping or penguin shipping? It doesn't oh, matter. Whatever type of shipping. No, it don't matter. matter. Yeah, so good luck finding a 9.8 of this. I, I know I'm going to grab a couple if I can. Um, Hashtag Hunter's Hunt. But yeah, this is probably that next open order hotness along with that Wolverine. Yep, yep. All right, Jeff. Thank you, sir. All right, and then going to me. Um, and no surprise, as I told the guys, um, it's for me, it's uh, Spider Gwen in the Gwenverse, and I'm really looking forward to this. It's essentially um, Spider Gwen or Gwen Stacy uh, jumps into different dimensions or different or parallel Earths where she is a different superhero. So it's kind of like going in, if you like the what if Miles Morales story, we're going to get the same thing here, but with Gwen Stacy. And I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what happens and s wait to see like how she's going to interact with all of these other Gwen Stacy's. Um, and these are the covers that I like, uh, you know, David Nakayama, of course, and that's cover a, and then you have this uh, um, one from Chris Anka, which I really like that you can find on uh, Tifa, which is things from another world. And I have two other covers, one by Chrissy Zulo, which you could have gotten at golden apple or Frankie's. And I believe they're sold out. And of course, had to go with Peach Momoko. And this is the incentive, the one in 100. And yeah. I mean, I love this like Captain Marvel version of Gwen Stacy. And I like the design variant. This is great. Yeah, I, I dig it. It's a clean cover, but man, it's going to knock your pockets into the dirt, yo. That one in 100 is going to be. Uh... I'm surprised that they made the design cover a one in 100. Typically, they're a one in 10, one in 15, not one in 100. Yeah, you ain't yeah, lying, brother. You know what? This is that's actually a nice looking one in uh, right? uh design variant. So yeah, for man. Momoko, I mean it's not like typical Momoko, uh, right? Yeah, right. But uh no graph paper, man. What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah man, you, you can't go that's wrong right. with that. 
That's right. That's right. Um, so that's what I got for for this week. And again, this I'll be definitely picking these up um, over at my LCS. Yeah. And cool. next yeah. we have Anthony. Anthony, what is going on with your covers of the week? Which is your first cover? So this one is a uh, Red Sonja Black, White, and Red number eight. And uh, as usual, Diamond. I mean, uh, Dynamite throws a whole slew of covers. You know. Mm -hmm um for all their books so this one is done by david mack um you know ever since he did his uh the covers for the daredevil run you know i've always loved his work um it's almost ethereal you know in a sense and then he's also done the the latest covers for uh something is killing the children you know for their their packs Oh yeah, I just I so, just picked up the second pack. I hope I need to get it. I hope dude. that's in my pull box. Yeah, I got. I need to, I need to find the first one. Pack. The first <laughs> pack is awesome. I've been posting the images one week after the other um, on my Instagram page, but uh, this one because it's cover mm -hmm. price, you know, I had to get it. Now, Anthony, did did you did did they do the version of this? Because normally they do, right? I mean, if it was a virgin, I'd jump on it. 100%. I'm not sure. I don't have money for Virgin Cards. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say pause for sure, but I just lost it. I was like, oh. no, you know what? I, I think this would, if they had a Virgin cover of this one, it would be awesome. I mean, get rid of the trade dress, the black, white, red, the, the dynamite 08. Right. And oh my God, it would just be. Oh no, it would be completely gorgeous. awesome. Absolutely. That's and, all David Mack art. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, yeah. and you know, and you know the other thing though, like um, they're usually like one in ten. Sometimes they do one in tens, one in twenty fives, one in fifteen, one in thirties. Yeah, you know, I, I'm like, like I'm, I'm doing an auction, but I mean, for God's sakes, they're competitively priced, man. You can pick those up. I know when Frank Cho was doing, um, you know, uh, Jimmy Pomiotti and Amanda Connor series, and he was doing the right. trades along with the Virgins. Those were one in tens, and I, I picked up, you know, two or three of those, man. There's yeah, no the virgin virgin. recipe does right. Like, those came out on cover price. The the virgin covers, I think, were like ten, fifteen dollars, depending on where you could get them, you know, and they're still going on. Um, and I know that they tend to come in cheaply on you know the lower end, but then they have their uh fifty dollar virgin covers, you know. So um, I try to just stick to trade dress right now, you know, so funds are tight, but Hey, I I'd rather take a trade dress than not at sure. all. I mean, especially with a cover like this. Hundred percent. Sure. There's no virgin. There's no one in ten for something else, and that's as far as they go with this one. Oh, gotcha, man. gotcha. Thanks Breaking for checking, heart. Big Rob. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you have another cover of the week, don't you? Yes, I do. Ooh. And yeah. I don't know if you've guys seen my previous picks, but I don't, I think there hasn't been a week that I haven't picked one of these. You know, and. Uh, I've got the first two so far, and I mean Raza is just not Raza. Killing it. Mark. Mm -hmm. Killing I love it. Raza. And that these are <laughs> all connecting variant covers, you know. Mm -hmm. So I am definitely looking forward to issues four and five as well. Mm -hmm. Um, the first two issues um have shot up in value. I think the first one is about 25, 30 bucks. Yeah, the, 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 the second one, one, the first one. Second one's like 15, 20 bucks, you know, so this one will be no exception, I believe. Because uh, I don't think that people realize just how beautiful these covers were going to be. Yeah. I mean, these. Uh, the, I, did, the I, have, I have a Raza Miles. Oh, no, so am I. <laughs> that one is oh, awesome. Oh, yes. Man. What about that Raza the, Alien cover? <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, number nine. Issue nine. Yes. By the way, there's a Raza on the FOC this week for Captain Marvel. It's out of this world, dude. Shut up. Ooh, yeah, man. Raza Raza has been knocking it out of the park no matter almost no matter what cover he's done. You know, but to me, while the image is great, personally, it doesn't do it justice. You gotta see it in your the hand. First, it, yeah. Yes, it is mm -hmm. gorgeous. No. Yeah, it looked realistic. <laughs> and like, and agree. Agree. Yeah, someone, someone said, didn't no. Agree. Someone no, was like, no, you're not going to play it. it. <laughs> no, when you see it, well, person, you're going to get that axe. The right. right, that's there. So, <laughs> yeah. for sure, that infrared and crimson motif, man, that's what it does. That's it does it for me, dude. I, yeah. I, I, I miss. I didn't even pick up this series. 
because you know I'm just all in. Yeah, no. I Republic, but I would have been uh, this bad, bad miss yeah, for no. me. To me, the only reason why I got this series was because of those covers. Mm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Honestly, kind of ditto. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's the only reason. <laughs> I was, I, I was so, so, like, I, I guess majority rules, right? <laughs> yeah, I was so burned out with bounty hunters that I was like, I don't want to do this. But then I saw that Rosa was like, all right, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the other reasons why. Right like in. It. Yep. And not just that. I mean, Nice of Ren was such a freaking waste in the movie. That at least they get a moment here on these covers. Yeah. yeah. So so their spec their spec value to all these uh well yeah, not- awesome covers because the Knights of Ren, their uh possibility of being acolytes and stuff like that. But some right. of them, I can't remember what show but acolytes or That's what I show. heard. Yeah. yeah. And, and it is would be the acolytes a show that uh they announced like way, way back. So for those people who are hunt, you know, they were specking and hunting, grab these covers while you can. Uh-huh. Uh, one nice. thing I was going to say is one of the aspects I like about these covers is there's a you see the smoke in the background and at the feet and stuff mm-hmm. it just adds another dimension I mean if you took the smoke out of there it would be an awesome cover anyway but with that that eerie smoke look it just even more so makes, makes whoever, whoever this is I don't know what character this is but makes them just look even more badass than they already are. I feel like mm-hmm. they're on the predator ship. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or, or, or they might be a nightmare like on Elm Street type of thing. You might see Freddy right <laughs> behind him. Right, right behind her. Oh, yep. man. These, these are great picks. Thanks, Anthony. Sure. My pleasure. All right. And then Big Rob, here you go. Your time All to right. shine. All right. I'm, I'm on the Star Wars wagon. We continue with the uh... Han Solo and Chewbacca from Mark oh man Guggenheim. Yeah. Guggenheim. Yeah, with Alex <laughs> Malib and Declan Chave. Different, different names. Do you know who he is? Declan Chave. Yeah. Guggenheim, isn't that a guy in the museum or something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Like, he, uh, uh, he did uh, Wolverine versus Blade, Blade, dude. He did Wolverine I thought he Blade. did the uh, DC stuff. And also for, uh, for I WB. Believe, uh, so, uh, I believe a Dark Horse title too, a most recent one, I believe. So story wise, it's you know, this actually it's gonna be a cool story because it's set a few years before episode four. So we don't have a lot of story for Han Solo mm-hmm. for that time period. And you're actually gonna see that the adventures of him and Chewbacca with Greedo as a partner. What? Yeah. Oh is dang. Part, of the, part of the crew, and yeah. they're gonna embark on this heist for Jabba the Hutt and stuff. So Han Solo better watch his back, you know? Yeah, so it should be interesting. He's just more of the scoundrel Han Solo. The, kind of more of the badass Han Solo. Not the, nice. not the good guy Han Solo. So that's cool. I didn't expect that. I really picked this for the covers, to be honest. Not these two covers. Uh, these two covers are okay, but these two covers right here. This yeah. is a one in... The Noto is a 1 in 25, which is, to me, brilliant. I love it. I love Greedo, Jabba the Hutt, how they look. The hand, chewy, everything about it is just perfect for me. The colors, the lighting, perfect. And then the Adam Hughes is a one in 50. So, yeah, these are going to be expensive. The only, I got one negativity on that Hughes is Chewbacca's eyes. I don't see his eyeballs, yeah. I see his black. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's like someone went a little too heavy on the ink. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think or maybe, maybe they went cheap to the, the colors. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe yeah, they maybe went Cheech and Chong, possibly. You never. Hey, did but you I... notice the Noto has the uh, um, Millennium Falcon in the background? Yeah, yeah, it's so much detail. And the Noto to me is the better cover. Yeah, but, uh, but the, of course the one in fifty, the, that's going to be the dollars ones for sure. Uh, they're both great, super popular artists. Noto and Hughes, they're like they're well beloved within the mm-hmm. comic book uh, realm. Uh, it's just, I, I definitely pre-ordered these because I saw these. I almost uh, like came in my pants but yeah uh <laughs> so full release your, there you go that's the your strike for the episode uh but uh yeah uh yeah dude, i highly recommend these uh the story sounds cool okay i can't wait to see the interaction between greedo and and chewy that'd be interesting uh so yeah so right. i wasn't sold on this book at all until you just mentioned that greedo was part of the crew right yeah so Actually, now, now i'm interested <laughs> Yeah, just to find out what how they yeah. how they behave together. That's interesting. 
Yeah, were they, and were they mean, buddies before it was like, hey, been. I'm going to be turning you into I Jabba. Yeah, because in episode four, they talk to each other like they really know each other well. Right. So we'll see. Yeah. Maybe both, you'll see them interact with Boba Fett as well. Some of the other bounty hunters we know, like Dengar and IG-88, more of a... Because that was Jawa's crew. He was part of Jawa's crew. That was, that was his job, really. No, this is going to be awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm in now. I'm in. That's uh, the second one in 50 for Adam Hughes. Right. For the love of covers, yeah. God. Dang. I've got... I mean, I, I'm. forgive me for sounding sexist, okay? But the Phil Noto cover has great detail, okay? It looks completely awesome. Adam Hughes is known for drawing voluptuous women. Han Solo's face has no detail on it whatsoever. It looks like a pasty vanilla ice cream just got splattered all over it, and uh, not feeling it too much. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's the style that he went for. I think he did that on purpose, to be honest. I get, I, I see that it's almost like um like a almost like a wash there, like it's yeah. Very, yeah, there's no detail like wrinkles and stuff, but I think that's the style he went for. I think he purposely mm-hmm. did that, so that it's not it's not for everybody, obviously. Right, you don't like it, uh, but I love it. It's but yeah. so it depends, you know. Who, I mean, I expect better from Hughes. Hughes, well, I mean, obviously, I mean, he knocked it out people, the park with people. the Wolverine. <laughs> I know. I so I think maybe he did. Like it, it could be that he would we what he was going for. I mean, that Wolverine looked amazing. No, I, I, got, I think yeah. it's I'm, a style. I'm on board with this, man. Yeah, it looks I like mean, a style. Look at look at his like what kind of face is that? Like who is he pointing at? He has like a little like snicker, you know, like a little smirk, no, like almost, swagger. Yeah, almost, man. Almost like he's trying to tr- touch that besh style on this cover. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah almost beshy. I yeah. mean, you know he's a good artist. Just look at the Falcon. Oh yeah. yeah, no, uh, that is dude. so no detailed in the it. background. <laughs> and I love the usage of yellow and then the mixture in as you go down into space. I mean, I'm on board, man, but this is gonna like yeah. top picks of the week. Dang you. I mean, you're gonna knock my pockets in my wallet. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. these are you know, these are on secondary market are going through gonna go through the roof. By oh, yeah. Yeah. To the moon, Alice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, to another galaxy far, far away. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Big Rob. Yeah. And then we have our Captain Obvious pick of the week. And with this one, we have Captain Carter by uh, Jamie McElvey. And everybody knows that uh, this is the first appearance of the Captain Carter that was uh-huh. featured on the What If episode for uh, um, over at Disney Plus. And these are the amazing covers that um, were chosen. Uh, what do you guys all think? I, do you think it's the obvious choice? Do you guys think that this is the one comic book that any and everybody will be grabbing this week? This is yes. going to have so many orders. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah they're going to rack crowd. up. The Disney Plus crowd is coming yeah. for this book. So, you know, and I, I, I've even... been well aware of this since FOC, way before. 100%. 100%, dude. Yeah, a lot of people put this on their pre-orders, you know, long, long ago. As soon as, as soon as it hit the pre-order, that's when people started ordering it, you know, especially the ratio covers, you know, like the, the Nakayama cover. All and sort of the, exclusives. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so. Yeah, for me. There, there is one that I just, I, I didn't have time to put on here, but if you guys have seen it, it is ten. the carni- Carnageized. Uh-huh version of captain carter and it's an open order one and it looks amazing nice by jen bertel oh yes. I, oh, I, I haven't seen that i think i gotta oh, you, have you, to check that I, out i just saw the image of it just today oh, and right. i was like oh my god i but i was too late to put this put it on here but that cover is it's beautiful it is a beautiful cover um if and it's open order if you see it definitely grab it because I love that animation one, the one in twenty five. The one looks like an old school comic book. Yeah, yeah, dude. I was, I, I was like, but it, on that one. it looks like the what if a- animation style. Yep, right here. Yeah, that one, and then you've got the uh, David Nakayama, which I really like, which yep. is with the you know the Union Jack in the background. Yep. And that first one, it, I I want to say it's an homage to one oh nine. 
to Captain America 109 where he's jumping out of the newspaper. It's his I origin story. You're right. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you are right. And that's the A cover. And, and the only reason I'm saying it, I'm literally looking at it plastered on my wall. So <laughs> uh, you're off. I was like, uh-huh. I was like Dude, I seen that. I was like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at that carnage. Yeah, it is, oh, do, do you have it on your phone? You want to show it to everybody real sure. quick? Sure. I like that guy. Bam. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's bring you up. Let's bring you up so everybody here on the show can see it. Oh, oh damn. There you go. Yeah, and you got to get that. Order, that oh. Jen Bartel. And that red yeah. pops, man. You got to get that. Yeah, it looks really dope. Well, yeah. I just clicked on it, and uh, let's see if my LCS <laughs> will acknowledge it. So many covers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I it, know. It, it's an open order, and it, it, it again, it looks amazing. It's going to be tough in high grade because of that red. It's all red, but it's beautiful. Yeah, because oh. I, I think okay. I just pre-ordered the the regular eight cover in the one in twenty five, so I might do this carnage one as well. It looks nice. I just got that other cover that's in the middle on top. That's the Winter Soldier. Yeah. 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 Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did you guys check out the one in ten though? The one the designer that one was good too, man. Oh yeah, I got that one as well. Yeah, the designer. Yeah, I got that one as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be broke this. Yeah. Week. <laughs> all right. I'm glad you guys are all in agreement that everybody and their mother will be getting this book. Come on. <laughs> Come and their away. grandmother too, man. I mean, because you know, <laughs> we're taking it way back. It's not a secret. If you, if you, it, I know it's still a technical, technically it's a, still a rumor, but obviously she's gonna be in Doctor Strange too, right? I know. Yeah, actually, I even said he's gonna, she's gonna be in it. So there's a cameo on the poster too for her. So yeah, there's like a there's a shield in one of the glasses. Uh, so glass pieces. Was- I wonder what the story is for this particular book. Is it going to be during World War II, or is it going to be uh, or going to the multiverse, or modern times? I wonder what the story is about. That's a good question. I don't know. I guess we'll have to pick it up and find out. Yeah. Wednesday, man. Can't yeah, I it. wonder if this is going to pick up right after the, the show. right after her episode, right? Because I mean, literally, there was so much. It was kind of following that same Captain America path, right? But then. Oh, no, no, no. I heard that she's actually going to be like Captain America and she's going to be awoken from frozen ice. That's uh, what I heard. Now, do you think do you think it'll, a lot of the storyline will kind of tie into like uh, her tragedy, right? And, and, wh- and what happened in that universe and kind of build up to something a little more action packed? I mean, maybe I, or it I, might I be just that universe. Sure. You never um, know, man. I don't know how closely they'll actually tie it to the show. I would assume. I, lot, I think they would. I think they want to, you know, they want to get all the synergies together. I think this is something they're, the, yeah. they would be foolish yeah. to get it. I mean, I, I'm not in disagreement because, I mean, it's Kevin Feige's in charge of everything. So, yep. yeah, he's running Marvel Comics now, probably. Now, yeah. now, now would, it, would it be dope, like, if you had a scene in Doctor Strange where maybe, like, you see kids, like, uh, or even adults, like, just like us, man, just watching the show as it premieres, what if, and it kind of gives you a little like snickered or just like it's like a gag, man. I would be like, dude, that is so dope. It's a multi person man, it's gonna kind of range from everywhere. Yeah, so, for it to tie into this time would be dope. I, I would think that would be an awesome scene. To some major shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. All right. So, that does it for this week's uh, picks of the week. And moving on to the comic book covers that were kind of talked about or mentioned via store exclusives or FOC um, that came out this week. Uh, guys, which one's your favorite? Pat, oh, Pat's a decent dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's I'm no joking. doubt about it. Yeah, man. I'm sandlotting ham, like freaking, you know, like just jumping in the pool for this, dude. The green one? Yeah, that shit's crazy, dude. It's Goblin sick. is my favorite. Cannibal. Spider-Man <laughs> villain. Fuck the Red Goblin. I don't, I don't care. I like the Red, the Red Goblin, Goblin one. one. It looks cool, but if I was gonna, if I had to choose between the two, I'm gonna have to run off with the Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> no, the and, Green and don't Goblin forget, is, you can get it, it on awesome. Patrick Gleason's website mm-hmm. on Saturday, six a.m. Pacific Standard Time, nine a.m. Eastern. So make sure to set your alarms, you guys. Well, yeah. that means um, you guys are late if you're listening to us. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that is but, true, but you never know. I mean, it might not sell out. Yeah, oh, I I this, this is gone. This is gone, brother. 
I'm, 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 I'm using my my mental mind to go. Hopefully, all of you have paid attention to Patrick Leeson and following him because you're missing out. I, I'm assuming I don't don't Spider-Man. think it's gonna sell out because ever since the Amazing Spider-Man 55 cover, he's been trying to catch lightning in a bottle again. He did it with the the Black Panther cover, which pretty much went nowhere. Okay, he overdid it with you know all the Spider-Man web covers and he did another web cover recently you know and now he's doing with with, with this you know i mean but this is the best one cover. okay so, best so, one since that. so anthony you you bring up a good point do you think there's you guys a panel do you guys think there's fatigue with this whole like web head type of art a long time ago yeah so long. so i'm going to compare this to jtc i'm going to compare it to the negative space comic book covers So he did it a while ago. This is where you're talking years ago. He started it and and it got hot and then it, you know, everyone got tired of it. And then he did a couple more recently that everyone really likes. So, I mean, as long as you do great art, it doesn't matter if it's been kind of played out as long as it looks great, right? Everyone can still enjoy that. At least they'll say, oh, that was one of the better versions, right? So the, and there's always going to be that case. And lucky for him, he gets another – I think he's going to hit another home run with this one. This one's going to sell out. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. I mean, that's just my p- humble opinion, though, right. of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, the I, reason why I say that it may or may not because, like, I honestly – to me, because of the pandemic, uh, issue number 55 felt like it was a number of years ago. But yet it was only two years ago that it came out. Right. You know, and and that was for issue fifty five. Now, mind you, you had the first print, the second print, the third print, the Virgin covers, the the Carnage cover, the Black and White Carnage cover, the second print cover, the Venom cover. Okay, all those were web covers, and then you You're had the Black lying. Panther cover. The, I mean, the Man Thing. You had the Man Thing. It's a lot. The Man Thing cover. You know, and that's a lot in a short period of time. While with the John Tyler Christopher, you have one here, one there. No, no one I don't there. know about that. No, <laughs> no it's one it, here and there. But it's it's not like ten covers in in the span of five months. Okay, well I'll give that to you. But Momoko has been well overused, and I get that too. Absolutely. But there's, but there's always going to be a good version within those many that were released in that year right yes so i agree that's that's what i think i and i agree with you it is kind of played out i get it it's not his fault about the spider-man 55 you can't blame him for that because it's not like he told marvel and can tell marvel to reprint it right <laughs> it just happened oh, to be no. very successful Let me and tell you something. that so marvel cover yeah was one of the best covers of the year it was simple and defining for him Okay, I mean it was it was fantastic. And so, while the, these are great, you you won't hear me say that they're not they're great, but I mean I'm not sure. Maybe maybe I hope it does sell out. I, I want to see this guy succeed again, you know, it's just that it's the same web design, you know, but I think he will, yeah. man. You want to know why? It's cuz it's kind of leading into they're supposed to have a aren't they supposed to have a new character that's going to be a uh kind of tying into where they're opening up with this you know new series in april mm, so or is this something uh, or is this a different issue no no it's, it's so i'm looking at it this way it's it's a relaunch of amazing spider-man number one and I, yeah we, we were talking about this backstage big rob had mentioned there's like a bazillion covers for this and then a bazillion store exclusives for this uh so just just be wary of what what you what you choose Cherry but, it. right i mean it's, it's a big launch too. for marvel Right. Sure. If if the covers were limited, then I would say the odds of this selling out were great. But because of all the other variant covers, people are thinking are gonna take a wait and see approach. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um uh, is that Archie? Is that Archie is Archie Peanuts? Is that a uh incentive or just an open order or store? It exclusive? is a store exclusive. Um it's- and it is coming oh. from our friends over at Stadium Comics. Who? So that's Stadium cool. Comics has this. I like this because it's, it's, it's Archie Peanuts. Peanuts. Yeah, Archie yeah. Peanuts. Watch that sell out. 
It will. It's got to be guaranteed. There's yeah, a ma- predator, major sure. niche. Yeah. For for peanuts with Archie. Yeah. Oh. Hands if down. you didn't know, that's probably one of my favorite cartoons growing up. Oh, a lot it's of just peanuts. Yeah. 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 I read I read the comic strip every Sunday. <laughs> so. Yeah. Charles you can't you, you can't hate on a Charlie Brown Christmas either, man. You played that record. Big for God's sakes, Big Rob has the record. Yeah, yeah five, five cents yeah. for advice. Is that, that <laughs> Dark Stalker? Is that is that an incentive or include exclusive or? Uh, that is also a store exclusive, um, and the one with Morrigan, um, I believe. And give me one second, I will find out the store for you. Um, it looks like it's Carnivore Comics. They're the ones that have this one. And it is uh, by Ariel Diaz. That's pretty good. Cover, yeah. And it's limited to just 400 as an FYI. Wow. Damn. Mm. Time good. to get a part-time the job. The one there's a lot of store exclusives out there. But I know Big job. Rob's a big fan of uh, <laughs> Dark Stalkers and Street Fighters. So. Yeah, dude. Because I, I we were talking about this a few weeks ago, remember? And I haven't seen this one yet. I missed this one. Well, okay. What about that Psylocke, though, man? I mean, I, I think it knocked like out the park with that one, man. Psylocke is always awesome, dude. Mm-hmm. Yes, no wrong yes, with yes. Who's that from? Uh, that is from um, um, it's um, unknown and street uh, LA hero. Why does oh. it look so Jim Lee ish? I don't know what it looks like, man. For, for, but for me, I'm picking it up, dude. It's hmm. what? maybe it's a homage cover, Psylocke. Yeah, so did you think of Jim Lee? Maybe, maybe yeah. like yeah. coming out of the uh, pool. So, I, <laughs> I oh man, like one. wild things, like straight wild things. That, that's that what was, I think X, of when I, when I think of Jim Lee drawing Psylocke. It's X Men number one when she's coming out of the pool, and Scott Summers is like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> boobs, boobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That he was, hit him with he hit him with a Beavis and butt head. He just that was issue, that him. was issue one. Yeah, she yeah, didn't bat an eye either. Uh, I got the care. That one. So that so that Harley Quinn's a total homage to the Catwoman, huh? Yes. Yep. Oh yeah. I that dig it. Sense. I love the whole like she's winking to the camera right here. Yeah. This is great. She's all who's busted all, up too. Who's the artist? Yeah. Adam Hughes. Adam, okay. That, oh, that's wow. the oh, same one. Yep. Yeah. Adam Hughes. And I like this Jim Lee one. I don't. Um, I think this is going to be for Batman 125 or something like that. Um, I don't know if it's going to be an open order or if it's going to be an incentive, but I like I love Jim Lee, so I'll be grabbing that one. So Jim obviously, Lee is the best. Uh, well, speculation was obviously that middle one that Hulk is going to be the big one. Yeah. Oh yeah, Titan, Titan yeah. Hulk. Yeah, I think, I think it's for Hulk number six. But yeah, I, I even I dig this cover though. Yeah. What about that Gabriel Delato man? I mean, uh, that is. A sick ass cover, man. I love the difference between what he's been doing uh, with the black borders, and uh, this is just a co- change of contrast. I like, I love it. I'm on board for that. It Spider-Man. makes him too pop even more. Mm-hmm. Yep. The moon, the moon touching Spider Man. Yeah. He's like, I'm yeah. ready to go save somebody's ass. Spider Man <laughs> one, Spider Man one. That's right. That's right. Tons and tons of variants, as, as Big Brother mentioned. A, yeah, I can't believe how many freaking Spider Man ones there are. Another money grab. <laughs> what about what about what about something's killed in the children, man? I mean, you you got to wait for someone to bring that up. That was yeah, twenty one. twenty one, right? Another money yeah. grab. There's a ton of covers for this shit. Too. Yes, there yeah, are. What, what number is this? Twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Oh, okay. Because they're they're coming back off the hiatus. Hiatus. Yeah. yeah. The ash can sold out and went through the roof on eBay. You know, so yeah, never saw it. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. one and a half of the bunch, bro. It was gone. It was Casper yeah. the Friendly Ghost to me. I had no idea that was happening. Yeah, it's just like uh, what was that Twig? <laughs> yeah, same thing. One. Yeah, Twig. Yeah, I don't go on Wednesday, so I don't oh, miss yeah, that one. Dude. That's that's another one you got to plan ahead for in May. But for that twenty, that something is killing the children. Cover is that an homage cover to itself? <laughs> Probably. Pro- yeah. That's not yeah. bad. That's fucking hilarious because they all oh. look like that. Yeah. yeah. It is. You know, I don't know how to put it. How, how else could you put Erica though, man? Like she's slashing, she's always slashing at something. So True. I'm, I'm it's funny. Book, I've never that's really killing the children. The yeah. You've never read the series, Anthony? No. Okay. Well, when you do take that time, man, if it goes like the foot, the, the foot on the gas from beginning to where it's at, man. 
it's yeah, great, pretty great. much. Yeah. But is it is it time to sell? Is it time to jump off this train, or should we stay on it? You, you should stay on it because they were already um, Tinian, um, and I forgot who the artist is. Um, they were already signed up to do a uh, series for this. The TV so show right now, oh, it's just, yeah, right now it's just time is to hold, and then uh, sell either when the trailer comes out or some additional news. But right now, it's something's going to chosen to hold. If so, you can find it on the cheap, definitely get those issues. So I would ask, I, I want to ask this, Alonzo, too. Um, if you are a collector and you have your raw books, do you sit and hold, or do you throw these suckers to CGC along with Department of Truth, possibly, and wait to get them back? I know you got yours back way early, but what would you say to somebody who is coming into this hobby, or maybe that's somebody that's in love with the series? You know what? It's because we haven't heard anything yet. I, I would submit them to CGC and then wait for them to come back. Because again, when things are optioned or things are discussed, it takes time. It takes time to get mm -hmm. that trailer. It, time, it takes time to get that news. We, we don't even know who the actress is that's going to play Erica Slaughter. We don't have any of that information. So right now, I would definitely, if you have like a couple of ish, key issues, it, definitely if you have those issues, number ones, um, I would submit them. I mean, I yeah. think right now, because I've been doing a lot of checking through values and prices you know because i'm going through my whole collection if you have issues one through ten oh yeah submit them submit them you know because anything after ten you could get it you know pretty inexpensive inexpensively you know or pretty cheaply especially the latter ones like 16 to 20 you can probably get it for cover price <sighs> you know so but yeah first 10 issues get them graded yeah right. you, you guys gotta start understand working on that yeah <laughs> De develop when people start doing developing you know like shows and stuff it takes it takes a while it can take years yep so that's why you know there's gonna be a lull at some point yeah i was gonna ask jeff normally for something like that from the time that they first make that kind of an announcement you figure what it takes about at least three to four years mm, it just depends no it depends um depends how fast they write the right right write the script it depends depends how uh fast the uh, yeah. company agrees to it or the right. producer or the directors right money. so it's all about the money. it's money so it, it depends if it, if it's cheap to make they could probably push it out in a year yeah really yeah, yeah. They, 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 they done it if it's yeah. cheap yeah if it's, it's cheap to make cheap. not a lot of fx right right so i mean they could for all we know the monsters could be not, not seen for a while it could True. just be shadows. So that would be like less effects, right? Right. And that would be actually a smart way to do it. Yeah. You know, kind of make it like a horror-esque if you never see, like, it's like Jaws, right? You never see the the, the, the monster well, first. Well, this will definitely be a action thriller horror type. Oh, it'll it'll be like horror. Action it'll horror. Be yeah. horror. Oh, it'll dude, be horror. Yeah. I am so, I am so down for this. Dude. It's oh, like yeah. Alien. It'll be like Aliens almost. Yes. Yeah, dude. Just half a kid's body just sitting there, just like dead. <laughs> Get away from her, you bitch. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that line. Oh, oh my God. All right, guys. Thank you for your input here at Comic Covers. And now we are going with Catching Up with the Herd. And guess what? Uh, we, whoops, are on a new channel. So oh, we yeah. have moved over to our new channel here. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hit those notification bells so that way you know uh, when our new content's arriving. Additionally, we have some new stuff as well. We have some new shows in development, which we're going to churn out, as well as a nice store on Teespring. So make sure to hit that link tree. Head over to Instagram. Click on that link tree. Check out what we have. We got a lot of apparel. Um, all of it looks great. Definitely, man. I can't wait, man. I'm just ready to purchase a, a hoodie, man. You need a hoodie, man, always. Yep, yep. If, you're, if you're trying to see this video on our old channel, sorry to say, you're not going to see it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> and, and let's just say, you know, like, uh, you know, home sweet home, man. Home, New home sweet home, man. Like Alonzo was saying, man, there's a lot of ideas in the in the mix and we're you know, working with new shows. So um, we, we are eager to go at it again. You know, um, this was a, a journey 
you know, in, in the making for like a year. And uh, once you hit that, that goal, man, can you do it again? And I think we definitely can. And we are super excited to bring uh, much more content guys. Thank you guys for joining the ride with us. Again. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Subscribe. That's right. That's right. Hit that like and subscribe guys. Yeah. All right. And now moving on with um, our pop culture and our uh, week in geek, we have Mr. Jeff, Mr. Geek Driven. I uh, lay it on us. Oh, wait a minute. You're not <laughs> Jeff. That's not Jeff. Oh, man. Not <laughs> Jeff. What happened? <laughs> don't me on I'm a dork. <laughs> that's what my happened? variant. What happened? That was my variant. You didn't remember? Oh, that's <laughs> right. From introspective. That's right. All right, Jeff, lay it on us. Yeah, so this week, there's not many stories this week. Well, we should have caught up from everything else, but this right here, there's a new Funko Pop for uh, release for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of oh, Madness. Oh, shit. And this character came out of nowhere, Sarah, and uh, a lot of rumors are going around who this character is. She's obviously uh, in uh, magical, I guess, robes. <laughs> <laughs> so... She looks like she's in uh comma um I can't even Comitage. remember. Yeah, Comitage. And uh could be Sarah Wilde, who would be like a um a girlfriend to Wong. Man, Wong got good taste, man. Shout out to my brother something Wong. Or Jungle Fever. Or yeah. Mortal's mom, who is also named Sarah. So I mean or it could be just a whole new character for all we know, um, just like uh, in uh, Shang Chi. So it, it's all up in the air. And we have no confirmation. So good luck guessing and good luck on your spec. <laughs> could this be that character that was in, in the commercial with the? They thought that was Kang and maybe uh, Captain Marvel. That is I a could- black. A black it looks like a black female sometimes in the, in the trailer so i it's definitely a black female but that's my opinion um i don't know could be she has the same short hair yeah that's what i'm saying um or it could be a combo it could be wong's girlfriend who's mortal's mom from another dimension <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's oh, off. I'm you so have sorry, it. Wong. Jeez, <laughs> oh, Why you do Wong like that? Maybe yeah, it's a man. Kang. Maybe it's a Kang variant. Yeah, you could be. Know. Sarah could be a. Who? Who's to say a, a? There can't be a woman Kang variant. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they did in Loki, right? So. Yeah. Your friend was more. They they proved it in Loki with Loki. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Like let's add to this. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Makes Note sense. taken. No, yep. you never know. Yeah, all right, and then Jeff, you have one other one, right? <laughs> yes. All right. So, uh, if everybody knows, the Batman was released uh, obviously today, but uh, I mean on Friday, uh, and they've had like a huge Thursday preview opening with like twenty-one million dollars, and from all the news is coming out that there's going to be a second spinoff from the movie, and. The rumors are right now it's going to be about Arkham Asylum. So if you guys don't know the history of Arkham Asylum, uh, it's connected to the Wayne family and um, the Arkham family. And uh, they created this place where, you know, the criminally you know deranged would go. And uh, insane. Criminally insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. That wasn't politically uh, correct. Uh. But yeah. <laughs> They, uh, it, it, it every, if you also know Arkham Asylum has, you know, houses the Joker, the Penguin, and any of the worst criminals ever. And so they also have like a lot of different stories. There's a lot of storylines with him going through Arkham. Uh, and who knows? Uh, I heard there was a rumor that this could be like an uh, anthology kind of show where it goes through like different villain stories. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cool. I like that. Yeah, that I like it really too. Cool. Kind of like um, a detective comics, possibly. Yeah. So I, I watched the John Campia show. If you guys don't know who John Campia is, yeah. he's the guy who released the um, photographs of the three Spider Men together and the Daredevil uh, picture where he's sitting down. Yeah. And uh, he didn't think they were real, but they actually turned out to be real and he had to take them down. Well, that guy has been in the movie, you know, reviewing industry for like 20 years, I think. He's back in the AMC days, and I used to work for AMC. So 
Um, I really liked watching him. He's really knowledgeable. He actually has connections in Hollywood. He knows people in high places. Um, uh, so he he knows like a lot of this stuff, and that's why you know I mentioned his name. But yeah, no, I I like this whole like idea of it being an anthology series. If if they go that route, oh my god, I think it'd be great. You know, if they walk down and, you know, you kind of see like the criminally insane and each character that they walk down like the hall has their own like episode. Clayface. You know, and oh, they keep dude, going. And mm. It's not it's not a rumor. I'm sorry. It was his theory, which I love. Yes. I would love that show. Because, I mean, you could do, yeah, Clayface, 100%. you do um, Killer Croc. Uh, Killer Croc. You do like the, the, the C, D level the, the Man Hatter villain. Man the Ventriloquist. The Ventriloquist. Maybe. The Ventriloquist. Yep. Exactly. Not, well, they probably would Who's it? Uh, the pig? Uh, Professor. Professor uh, Pig. Pig. Greg, yeah. Professor Pig. They could maybe uh, set up the night, the uh, the Court of Owls. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's and that I think that's what they're saying. They're going to yeah, introduce Court of Owls somewhere in there. Yes. I mean, for all we know, we haven't watched the Batman because that's going to that'll be yeah, for tomorrow. We may touch upon that Saturday. You know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's always been rumors that the Court of Owls is somehow in the background of this the Batman movie. Right. Right, and that it's going to be the the undertone of of the whole series. Let me check eBay. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I know I haven't yeah, checked Daniel, anything. That I don't want to get spoiled. I, I I think the court of owls are are I think that they've been mentioned already in a lot of the Batman movie spoilers or even little blurbs. Oh, I thank think. goodness! Uh, I didn't read any of those. Oh, spoiler! Spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I, I just ruined the movie for you. Oh, oh my god. god. Nah, well, I already knew that was a rumor. You know that I knew the, it was a good rumor. The best thing about this is that, you know, like DC has been like hit or miss with these movies and then we're now we're starting to get like them churning and they're starting to bring in good movies. I'm I mean, you look I love Suicide Squad. You know, uh Peacemaker was amazing. Oh. You know, like, and now you're gonna bring in a Batman movie, and, and already the community's buzzing, man. We got I, I, community no. folk. Copy eight hundred one. He's probably like, <laughs> or exactly. brother Glenn. Exactly. I enjoy the. I enjoy these movies. The only thing that bothers me a bit is that they can't they can't mesh them together. Not like what Marvel's done. Well, you can't. You know. It's it's like Star Wars, right? So the sequels, all three movies, the reason why they didn't work is because three different writers, directors, you, you got it all jumbled up. There's no there's no you know central no figure who's right. who's like directing everybody in a certain way. You know, it's basically it's a free for all. And mismatch. when you have a free for all, you're gonna got mismatched stories you can't put together because nothing makes sense. With Star Wars, you got that anyway with all the books and the comics and everything, you know. I mean, but DC, essentially Marvel, in a sense, handed them a, you know. A blueprint? A blueprint. script of how to do it. Yep. You know, and they fumbled it. You know? No, they, no, no, no. See, that's the thing. They didn't want to follow their plan. They knew there was a blueprint. They right. didn't want to follow it because they didn't want everyone to go, oh, they're just trying to jump on Marvel's bandwagon here and and follow them. And, you know, and it's and they're also more actor and director um, uh, driven. focused, right. yeah, driven, uh, which is WB's, you know, more more than likely their focus. So that's why they allow them to use their own ideas and you know stretch it to the their own mold it to their own you know views but wouldn't but didn't that also become their achilles heel in a sense well th again only because they try to mix it all together and when you try to mix it all together it's you know you're asking the guy over here uh you know in in class a to to you know get with class b over here in this room and and you know try to work together, but they've got two different projects. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. They're not, they're not meshing anything together. They're not working together in that sense. Um, I mean, it's, 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 
that's why they have literally like four different universes going in the DC universe yeah. in the movies, like, right? Because everybody's working in silos. There's no communication. There isn't right. like like Jeff mentioned. There isn't like Kevin Feige or someone that's no. kind of saying, "Hey, this is this is the goal." This is the vision. This is what we have to accomplish. You know, you have people are just doing their own thing. And it's just like, yeah, like to Jeff's point, I mean, they're just given like, oh, hey, I'm done with this one show or one movie. Here you, here you go. But then you don't get any information of like, where were these characters going to go eventually? Or well, what do you have any plot lines that are dangling? Like, where do you think they'll go? I mean, there's there's just no kind of communication. They just drop in and like, hey, I'm done. Y you handle it. Well, that's and what, I think that's what DC did. That's what Matt Reeves liked about DC because he, he they, mm -hmm. they asked him about Marvel and he said, mm -hmm. "I can never do Marvel because it's the, they already got their own thing, their own vision, their own picture." And with DC, they didn't they didn't have that, so I was able to play more with the world, and my vision, my view. So that's the so that's the reason we get this version of Batman, and, and I don't think we could never get that with the, if they ran like Marvel. You know what DC. though, I. I think now I, I, I agree with that statement because, you know, Kevin right. Feige has this vision, right? But now that they've opened up the multiverse, now that they've had like, what if I think directors that are more indie or want to have more control, they, they can. can do that and maybe, and they can have like a, a playground or a sandbox to play in. At Marvel? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think so. I think Feige is like, like, like their they're... own world, right? Their own parallel worlds. It's the Vladimir, I it's think Vladimir Feige, man. He controls the Marvel Universe with an iron <laughs> hammer. With an iron fist. I don't, I don't I mean, think it's exactly oh, like bro. that because he has a... I mean, like, hey, look here, camera. Do no. you do it my way or you're done? What <laughs> <laughs> no, no. bullshit guy. I'll invade your movie. Too close to home right now with that statement. But yeah, I mean, man, I, uh, in a sense, yeah, I agree with Rob that you know, Feige has his vision, okay? And he's willing to listen to others, you know, if listen, their ideas yeah. are better. But more often than not, it's his way or the highway. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, no. And I, sometimes I, he's wrong, you know? Like, look I, what happened with the James exactly. Gunn issue, you know, that well, they, they left and they had to rehire him back. And, it's you know. I like that because he has, he Ant actually man, has a. a that man. No, he, has a them, bull, right? he has a bullpen of like directors that he actually consults with on these movies it's not like and he has two like right hand people that actually have been working on these movies that are writing work for marvel so like they they also have been around the whole time the directors and the writers write the stories but there's a basic synopsis that kevin Feige presents to all of them this is this is the synopsis you're going to follow it to the letter it don't divert because I will fire your ass that's how it's gone these literally fire directors off films because they don't follow that letter no and, and I think with Ant Man and with Doctor Strange, when they fired those two directors, it wasn't literal a firing. It was kind of it was a, a real departure of both of them. They actually have two different visions, and the vision had to change. He he he, he changed the vision because Ant Man was supposed to come first. He changed it to his what he wanted. That's what I heard. Well, no, I understand that it's what he wanted. Would you say it? But it also yeah. he has to when you have to go change you know change directions on a fly. I, I'm some there's some sacrifices sometimes yeah, no. if, if it doesn't if they don't agree to like okay well here's the direction that this is actually going now because yeah we we don't have access to this character or, or we did get access to you know spider-man so we can, we're gonna change the story a little bit here yeah and and once that other director goes you know what i'm, I'm not gonna bend i, I already yeah. wrote the story uh i'm not gonna bend and bye and bye. so Feige's like okay well bye and yeah. I get that. I get it. It's his way, but yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I guess I have to agree. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn yeah, it, Rod. Multiverse. Do whatever you want. You have your own sandbox. Kamarad Feige. It's his way, man. I don't know. I don't know. I I think it opens it opens more possibilities. I think you know, like with the multiverse, right? I mean, you might get a Tom Cruise Iron Man, and he might have a standalone movie. I, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, not that the rumors are true, not that I believe it's true. But, oh yeah, that, you know, that, I mean, something like that could happen. I yeah, mean, you could have possible. an Iron Man that's different. But it'll be Feige's vision, my Iron Man. Yeah, you See, know. Now, can Feige like, we trust? Like DC in their own way, 
was kind of heading in that direction since Zack Snyder was the one who was sort of in charge, but DC didn't want to give him the reins, especially when, in a way, he showed them up. And the pe people liked his vision better than what DC put out a couple few years before. You know, with the especially with the Justice League movie. You know, I think just Josh Wait Waden just messed that up. I think we could probably <laughs> possibly put a pin on this and until we watch Batman and have more context and just let's let's do that. Thank you. Totally Steve. geek out, right? I mean. <laughs> Jeez, I'm, I'm already getting eager, man. I just want to wake up, go to the movies, man, and just yep. hit it. Well, All we, right, already watched, we already watched it. It's Monday. Oh, yeah, we did, Big Rob. Sunday. You're right. It's you, mean, you mean it's Thanks, Sunday, Doc Big Brown. Rob? Oh, sorry, Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. We're, we're, we're at near Mint Mondays right now, so yeah, come dude. on by in Anaheim. That's right. Can we, just, go. can we just say we started in the car, like, and we were just hitting it, hitting it throughout the whole show. We're just like, they're stop already. Just to let everyone know, they're flying me to the West Coast so I could watch it with them. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, for upcoming shows, uh, we what do we got on Monday, Steve? Oh, man, you got fan anime talk with Los Hermanos, man. You got my brother Eric the Phoenix, man. Last Monday, we discussed Arcane League of Legends episodes one through three. It was an amazing, amazing anime, man. A lot of panning in, a lot of panning out, a lot of fast-paced, uh, great storyline from the beginning. We're now going to episode four, five, and six. This takes a time jump. You know, from V and Powder parting ways. Sorry for the spoilers, guys, but you got to watch one and three. Definitely get into four, five, and six. Uh, I mean, this is excellent work. I love the artwork and what Netflix is bringing to the table, adding certain anime, but also a, a, a different taste and a different spin on um, animated films. I love it. And it's League right. of Legends. There's a oh, yeah. cult following. <laughs> Oh man, you know you know there are people playing that game left and right, man. Show so good, sibling rivalry at its best. Oh, yep. dude, hundred percent. All right, and then uh, Big Rob, what do we got here? It is uh, Common Lovers, uh, brought to you by CBS. I am T Nerd Herd. We work together to present uh, this beautiful show of our favorite coverage for the next of uh, the future week, next week, which uh, for this will be next week for us. Uh, so or this week, I going to show the show. And we'll discuss all the incentives and store exclusives of that particular week. And there's a great batch this week, like always. Every, every week there's hot covers and bad ones as well. We'll talk about those as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a fun show. It's actually one of my that's one of the fun shows I, I'm on. So it's uh, I love it. So it's, it's uh, Tuesday mornings, 8 a.m. It coincides with um, Mike Morello's article that drops on CBS's website, uh, Cover Fire, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Thanks, Big you know, Rob. Can we get an anthem for Cover Lovers, Alonzo? Can we? Can we? Can it be like "For the Love of Covers"? Oh my God! <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to quit my day job, but this is, <laughs> but this you is just what? idea, you know. You know what, Steve? Talk to your 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 buddy Eddie, and oh. maybe we can make something happen. All right, all right. It's like I'm in love with a cover. Or just, <laughs> just holler at Bone Thugs and Harmony, bro. See what it's That's all about. right, right. Uh, oh, yo, man. I might, I might have to get Gomez to, to holler at them. You know, at Bone Thugs. Oh, bro, man. all right, Jeff. Talk to me, Jeff. All right. So Saturday, yesterday, we went and saw <laughs> the Batman <laughs> with the community. <laughs> And because we saw it yesterday, we're going to talk about it on Tuesday. So we're going to review the Batman on Tuesday. We're going to have some special guests. Hopefully, we'll cross our fingers. Hopefully, some of the people that joined us on Saturday uh, will join us for a review. And I can't – I look, three hours, yes, I'm going to have to, like, somehow, like, get a, a something to tie my bladder together because it's going to be <laughs> hell for all of us. Oh, dude. but I I hope I'm just captivated by what I watch, dude. They're they're saying it's gritty as hell. Um, yeah, you know, just I mean, just before jumping on doing this, man, I was like just constantly looking at the freaking trailer. I'm like, da -da 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 -da, just singing to myself, running in the front room like an idiot. <laughs> You're not supposed to know that thing song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dry. I'll be driving up, dude, to OC, do singing that in my head. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. All right, and then Steve. I mean, you're gonna have to talk to us about this Mondo Mail call. Oh well, let me get set up first, man. Let me get it. Woo, woo. 
<laughs> All right, man. We got a Mondo mail call, man. You know Mondo mail calls are the best kind of show, man. It gets us with the guys, man. We just get to see everybody's mail calls and what they're bringing. We also get to chat with the herd, man. That's the best part about this. But this is a community-based show, man. I love this show. I love getting to know our fellow comic book collectors in that community, man. And who other than the hype man, man? Uh, right, right now, how I'm speaking it up, he's probably going to pull me off to the side and go, go ahead and hold my beer and sit down. Let me do my own damn, you know, intro. And that might happen. You never know. Because uh, <laughs> the way he slaps a chest and the way I saw him next to Justin, the mayor, it scared me. So, but I can't wait, man. BX Boxer, step into the squared circle, my brother. And let's get to know my brother, man. I can't wait. That versus segment might get ugly. You never know. Oh. Alonzo, I'm going to throw you in front of it. In front of me. Oh, man. Thanks, just, thanks for that, Steve. You know, hey, man. It's nothing but love. I'll be your human shield. That's right, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you, but I can't of wait. Of course, of course. All right, man. Uh, that and that's it. Ooh, man. I I feel like this show was just a plethora. I mean, you got your covers, you got your store exclusive, you guys got catching up with the herd, you got shows in the near future, and we are in a new home, guys. So let us let us let us go ahead and remind you guys where we are at and where you could find us, man. You could find us down below sub up hit that notification bell like it owes you money and definitely drop some comments on the bottom man let us know what your guys' top picks of the week let us know what you're going to be looking out for dare i say it will i be on the wrong day wednesday no i'm not we're on the right type of time so definitely much much love to the community thank you guys so much and thank you again for joining us on this new journey new subscribers man we can't thank you enough old and new community based much much love and with that being said, we are going to take it out this bitch with, if you want to do it right, collect what you like.